today. Uh, my name is Brian Hilliard, and as you can tell, I am not from the South. <laughs> and that's fine, okay? Uh, you might want to take a guess, maybe part of the country. I, I don't know if you're going to get the state. Part of the country. Mid Atlantic. That's interesting. That's interesting. No. Mid Atlantic. <laughs> No, Northeast, that's absolutely it. Now, I'm originally from Connecticut. I'm originally from Connecticut. Uh, moved down here back in 98, actually. Uh, was up in, was actually born in New Jersey, um, and then went up there and stayed up there for a while, obviously, when I was growing up. Uh, went to school in North Carolina, okay? So I actually went to Duke. Um, got a marketing degree and an economics degree from those folks. Um, and you know, it's one of the interesting things was I, I always tell people, it was that was the first time I realized that there's a whole section of the country where you don't have to shovel snow. <laughs> you know, and I tell my wife, I said, this is real I said, I don't know why anybody's living north of the Mason Dixon line. She assures me that, that wouldn't work because of like, you know, some capacity issues down here. But beyond that, you know, it just it seemed like a really good idea. So I lived in uh, like I said, went to school in North Carolina, moved here in nineteen ninety-eight. Nineteen ninety-eight. Um, and then was going to work a little bit for some different companies. Started my own business right after 9-11. Right after 9-11, um, that same year, you know, got my business license and took care of some business. And I'm a coach by trade, marketing person, speaker. I've uh, written a few books and stuff like that. We can talk about that. But essentially what I do is I help busy entrepreneurs market their business in less than nine days. Okay? And what we're going to talk about is how as a, either a consultant, a developer, business owner, freelancer, heart-centered entrepreneur, I've been using that lately, okay? Um, how you can, as a business owner, be able to generate more business with WordPress and be able to do it in a way that doesn't have to feel you know, <laughs> icky about it, just being able to get to a point where people feel comfortable. Does that make sense? Is yeah. everybody cool with that? Give me a little something. Is everybody cool with that? Yeah. 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 There we go. Thank you. All right. So, oh, oh, I almost forgot. I said this is going to be the second thing I mentioned, which technically is. Second point I'm going to make, which is uh, there was a young lady who was up here. If you apparently, she lost a cell phone, okay? So I'm just going to read this. She said it was a cell phone. It was an iPhone 6S. <clears throat> Last time she saw it was in the ballroom, in the keynote. So if for whatever reason anybody comes across an iPhone, um, she said to you guys just to be able to drop it off over at the uh, registration table, if you see. So that's our public service announcement. Okay. Um, you're just testing. That's funny. It's good work. I don't know because I didn't ask her for that. Um, anyway, so we have got. Here's what I'm going to do. I call it the top three mistakes. The top three mistakes people make in terms of trying to get more business with WordPress. Okay. Top three mistakes people make while trying to get more business uh, through WordPress. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of count down. I've got some Q&A and stuff in between. So this is going to be a dialogue, all right? We're going to have a nice, good discussion, and we're going to get into it. All right, so here we go. I see some people writing stuff down. Um, and I'm going to, I love these whiteboards. You know, it's kind of like if you were to be able to give me like a two minute toss, I might use all, not four, but I might use all three of them. All right, mistake number three. If you build it, <laughs> we already know where this is coming, they will come. Okay? If you build it, they will come. Now, first of all, what do you think about my nifty little color? It's a little different, right? I got this over at the office supply store. Um, but if you build it, they will come. You don't it is that when you, as a business owner, okay, as a business owner, there is a tendency to think that I just need to put up my website, I just need to get my business cards, and I will get more business. Right? Now, how many people believe that's true? Good. Okay, because that was my trick question right off the bat. Sometimes I let warm people up for that, but I try to sneak in one right off the bat on it. That is not true, right? And, and why is that not true? Well, part of it is because we live in a, and there is so many, I started in 2001, before, before any of this stuff, just when the internet literally was coming on online, as we know it, was just coming online, okay? And part of the problem is that we live in such a fragmented, um, skeptical society that 
they need to be able to see what it is that you're doing. All right. Part of the other thing too is when you talk about this, if you build it, they will come. And this is kind of I think a good point. People think that marketing or or whatever is a bad thing. Okay, marketing is not a bad thing. I'm gonna just marketing is not a bad thing. Okay, marketing is the idea. People think marketing is trying to convince others to buy your stuff. That's not what marketing is. Marketing is about creating an awareness with your potential client base about a need that you can potentially solve. I'm going to say that again. Marketing is about creating an awareness with your potential client base regarding a need that you might be able to solve. Okay? So when you go with this, if you build it, they will come as a mistake. Part of the challenge is it's getting an understanding as to what the heck it is that you even need to be able to do. All right. So the first thing that we want to be able to talk about inside of this is a challenge that is I see all the time inside of this. Mm. The only problem with spelling, sometimes I don't know how to do it. <laughs> inconsistent marketing efforts. All right, so let's talk about inconsistency. So I have a website and I have a blog and I've got all this stuff, right? And I publish a newsletter every once in a while. I have a website, I have all this stuff, I have business cards, and I publish you know, a blog post every once in a while. I have a newsletter, I have a site, and I put together a video. Just to see what happens, because you know I've got a little time and I feel like marketing. Okay? Inconsistent marketing is a killer. Because what happens is people aren't really clear of what it is that is coming out there. There's no, we're not going to get into, if you want to talk about branding, I guess we can, but that's not really the point of this discussion. But an inconsistent marketing effort is no way is going to help you build your brand. Okay, you think about one of the better brands in this country. Coke. In my opinion, Disney. Okay, these are some of the better brands in this country. And you know, every year, every year with the Coke, I know that I'm going to get myself, the kid, and the polar bear with the thing saying, "I wish there were, I could buy the world a Coke." Every year, I know I'm going to get that, and you do too. Okay, I get branding. I get the same thing with Disney. I get branding, I get consistent marketing. Disney has an entire television station whose sole goal is to present more Disney stuff. <laughs> you ever look at Disney TV? They don't have they don't have tele, they don't have commercials about other stuff. It's all about their stuff. Okay? So as a marketer, as a freelancer, as somebody who's an under, what can you do? All right. In order to get past the inconsistent marketing, you have to be able to understand, first of all, that marketing is not is something that you do want to be able to do. It's creating an awareness. Second thing you want to understand is that you want to be able to, part of the issue is that people try to be everything to everyone. Okay? And that's not going to do it. So when they, they get overwhelmed by marketing and it devolves into inconsistent marketing, right? So they start with this idea of I'm going to go out and market, and then it devolves into inconsistent marketing. Why? Because there's so much stuff they need to do. So what you want to do is you want to get yourself some target markets. I call them spheres of influence. All right. What is a sphere of influence? Sphere, as in like uh, whatever. I don't know. Ball. Spheres of influence. What is it? Yeah, yeah, who you, people who you're starting with. Here's how I define it. This, this is my personal definition. A sphere of influence are groups of individuals who are most likely to use your service. All right, let me say that again. A sphere of influence are groups of individuals who are most likely, that's important, to use your service. Let me tell you why that's important. Because t sometimes people say, well, I'm going to have a target market. And I'm going to go after doctors and lawyers. I'm going to go get the business. Well, you've heard this. You've seen this. Maybe you've done this. And that's fine. Okay? The difference between what I'm talking about and the example that I just made fun of is that the former, the spheres of influence, is taking a look at people and going from a place of a value who are they understand that they need potentially your service. Okay? They just have to figure out whether they're going to use you or the other guy. Versus target markets, that's a you-based company. I want to get doctors and lawyers. So let me give you an example. Let's say if I'm, obviously you guys are, you know, like let's say a developer, okay, the web, web, website. You do not want to be talking to people 
who are saying that I don't need a website. <laughs> but Brian, but Brian, I need to give it I need to educate these people. I love them. But I'm, right? You've heard, you've heard this. Oh, what are you doing? Well, they, they have a problem. Well, that's okay because I'm <coughs> educating them. That's fine. If you want to do that, that's fine. That's not what I'm going to talk about, but that's fine. Okay? What you want to do, what I'm talking about, are people who understand, using this example, the value of a website. People who understand the value of marketing. The people who understand the value of a blog. People who understand that it needs to look good and not look like something else. Okay. Those are spheres of influence. Now, those might be two or three. And don't feel like you need to get industries either. People say, oh, I want to lock myself into one industry. Now, what do you need to think about industries? You can do profiles. Okay. They might be business owners who are two or more years who are living in the Atlanta area. They might be business owners who are service professionals. They might include doctors and dentists and lawyers and people that you talked about before. And that's fine. We're not saying do not include them. We're just giving you an understanding. Once you've got that, then you know what to tell these people. <coughs> you have a message. Okay? The other thing you're going to want to do to get around this in terms of the marketing is do yourself a favor and get yourself a marketing calendar. I'm going to go old school on you. Okay? I'm talking about the kind that you get at the office supply store. <laughs> the same place where I got these, actually. You, too, can get a 2,000 and whatever calendar, okay? <laughs> and you can write stuff in it. I do that. They say, Brian, I've got my iPad, ThinkPad, 29,000. <laughs> okay, that's just not what I'm talking about. That's fine. Okay, what I'm talking about is a physical marketing calendar, all right? I want to have a conversation about this calendar on your desk, front and center, you can flip it open, and on Saturday, you see what you're supposed to send out on Facebook, you see what you're supposed to send out on your blog post, you see what you're supposed to send out on your newsletter. Okay? If you want to get like me, which I'm not suggesting, but if you do, you get different colored pens, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking. I'm not saying you have to do that. Okay? And what I'll do is I'll have, a, I'll have something that goes out to my newsletter. Okay? I have a newsletter. You guys, for the, for the uh, raffle, we're going to do a raffle, by the way. Okay? So if you want to be able to, you'll be getting, you know, because we don't have all day, what you'll be getting, though, is you'll be getting newsletter, email, value ads. Okay? And you'll be able to see when those go out. So now what I'm doing is I'm making sure that people are in that deal. Now, let's talk about and relate that back to WordPress. What you want to do, and I'm sure you guys know this, but let me just go over it real quick. The ways you want to be able to do that, if you don't have an online newsletter and you are in the WordPress field as a source of developer and, and things like that, and I'm just going to have to really, really, really strongly encourage you to kind of bear down and get that. I personally use uh, MailChimp. It's real easy. It's a free service. It is like no time. Your service, you can't hear. Oh, you can? Well, this whole time you haven't been here? I'm from Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> MailChimp. <laughs> MailChimp, okay, MailChimp.com. Uh, it's a free service. You can put, your, put all the people's names and stuff on there. You can publish that. I want to say it's free up to 2,000 names. OK, he's not. Up to 2,000 names. After that, I think I spent $10 a month. Yeah, it's net, if I don't know the number, then it's not a big deal. OK? Uh, I'm, sending those, I'm sending out my newsletter, and I'm bringing them back to WordPress, my site. I'm bringing them back to my blog. Okay, so what happens is, as you guys know, it's all about traffic, right? You bring people back to the thing. So I'll do a video on YouTube, I'll put it out there, I will then load it into my uh, MailChimp newsletter, obviously everybody's with me on that, and then I link that back to my blog, okay? And then with my blog, what happens is, people are able to see what's going on, you know, I'll ask for, a, I did something the other day where I even asked for, talk about getting business through WordPress, I sent out a newsletter asking for some speaking engagements. I just said, hey, listen, you know, I'm trying to get serious about doing more speaking this year. If you know somebody in this area of trade association or something like that, you know, a conference, guy comes back, says, okay, going out, you know, doing an engagement. 
Okay, so you can get, you can use your, your site in terms of your blog, download. if you do speaking, that's fine, but that's one example. You can do it for getting referrals, that's a big one. You know, we won't get into that right this second, but don't be afraid to can have a, a page on your site geared specifically for referrals. You say, Brian, now, okay, help me understand conceptually what that looks like. Well, what would happen is, you've got somebody who, okay, uh, let's think about this. This would be the person who does, who knows you, okay? They know you. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to introduce you to this other person who does not know you, right? So sometimes what happens is you get like an email introduction, right? And we've all seen kind of how that works, right? But wouldn't it be great where instead of just replying back and saying, oh, it's so great to meet you, and I'll call you and see if I... Wouldn't it be much better if you can then send something back to this person with a page on your WordPress site that maybe has a little video on there, maybe has a little elevator pitch of what it is that you do, maybe has a little bit of something that gives a little bit of something about you. Is that, am I making sense with this? Okay. I'm not saying you have to do all of this, but that gives you a feel for what it is that you're trying to do. Okay. All right, marketing calendar, all that good stuff, we have covered that. All right, let's get into our next mistake, which is, let's see what we got here. Ah, <laughs> all right. Yeah, that's three, because I can do that. <laughs> all right, next mistake <laughs> is thinking sales is a four-letter word. Let's talk about that. Thinking that sales is a four-letter word. Now, a lot of people, when they think about sales, they kind of get a little edgy, right? They think of sales as a, um, well, let me ask you. Just, if I say sales, what's a word that comes to your mind? Hard sales. Hard sales, money. Telemarketing. Telemarketers, I heard pushy, I think, over here. Consultant. You think of sales with consultant? That's the new age of sales. As a consultant. Okay. Advisor. Okay. Consultant. Okay. That's interesting. I haven't heard that, but I'm, okay, that's fine. You, usually we hear more of the other stuff that you said. It's more uh, pejorative in nature, right? Where people are like pushy and used car salesmen is something that comes up, you know, and all of that kind of stuff. Let me kind of get you to think about this a little bit different way. So if we're talking about getting your business and we're talking about growing as a consultant or whatever it is that you're doing. Sales is something that you have to do because people have to be able to get something to buy in the first place. If you don't present it, and we'll talk about that, if you don't present it that no one's gonna buy it, then we all have to go get a job. I'm just, okay. Then we all go home, we shake hands, Brian was a great speaker, and then we go get a job. <laughs> okay? So there has to be something that we do in order to not have to do that. Okay? And, and here's the way that I describe it to folks. Everything that you probably know, 95% uh, of what you know about sales probably is what I'm going to call the traditional sales approach, if you don't mind. Okay? Negative, pejorative in nature, just very, you know, down, okay? But let me put that on a box, if you don't mind, and let me call that the traditional approach. Just for a second, let me call that the traditional approach. And if you don't mind, I'm gonna open up this other box over here. And I'd like to call that, I know you said you didn't like consulting, but that's what, that's what I call it, which is a consultative sales approach, all right? Now, let me just tell you what a consultative sales approach can look like. A consultative sales approach can be an education-based conversation. It can be a question-oriented discussion. It can be a dialogue where you are trying to understand where that person is coming from so that you can determine, A, if you are the right person, and B, what that service offering is. A consultative sales approach is one, you know, so one of the things that I'm doing on my Facebook account is I'm doing um, a, a movie reviews. Like I just like I watch too many movies. I have Netflix and I watch too many, and that's fine. 
But I figured, you know what, I'm just going to start putting it out there, and I put the trailer and stuff like that. Has anybody heard of the movie Primer? Yeah, I love that. If you haven't heard it, it the time shift. Yeah, it's exactly right. That's right. It's exactly right. And the, what it's about is about two guys. They do a little. Uh, they have an experiment, stuff like that. They're working on it. And yeah, they develop a box that has a little bit of time lapse situation into it. Okay. And it's really, really. It's not like a Star Trek. It's really, really good. It's one of my favorite movies. I gave it five out of five stars. And if you get a chance, I'd, I'd recommend it. You, you take a look at it. Now, let me ask you something. Was that sales? I mean, it was. Yeah. Yes. Hold on, I heard no, I heard that's, yes. That's the new age of sales. <laughs> okay, so was it sales or not? Yes, ma'am. Well, you weren't really selling a thing, you were more sharing an idea or sharing interesting. information. So I was sharing. Now, that's an interesting <laughs> word. I was sharing. Okay, how about how, people okay with that thought? Okay. Did I ask for the business? Yeah. Did I ask for the business? No. Hold on. What's what? What if? What? <laughs> Say that again. You gotta build it the authority first, and then you recommend the account. So based upon being from Connecticut, and your and your reviews on Facebook, we're like, hey, you this up. You built that authority, so you can recommend something. And sell something right. without hard selling. Okay, that's a distinction though now, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Uh, <coughs> mm, I guess I was sharing. Sure. Now let me ask you this. This is a rhetorical question. Why can't we do that with our business? Why does when we're trying to get business, when we're talking to somebody, why does it have to be this anxiety producing, live or die, shoot out at the OK Corral? I also saw a tombstone, which I like. <laughs> why does it have to be this adversarial conversation? You know why? Because that's all we were learned that we were taught. You know why? Because we grew up in an age where the past uh, all the ways really changed in 2000 with the internet. Let's just as a as a baseline, okay? But for the other 500 years before that, <coughs> okay, it was interruption based. It was let me. I'm at the phone. I'm, I'm eating dinner and the phone rings. It was I'm watching television and the uh, commercial comes up. It was I'm on the internet and the pop up comes up. It was all interruption based. It never occurred to anybody that that is one form of sales. But why does it have to be the only form of sales? Which brings us back to the four letter word. What if we were to be able to, instead of trying to sell our services and to get more business as a WordPress consultant or whatever, instead of doing the traditional approach, what if we say it's name to that and we go with more of a consultative approach? Great book, by the way, it's called uh, Solution Selling, Michael Bosler. Very good, first sales book I've read. Solution, now make sure you get, you're gonna do this, get the one that was written like in the 90s, okay? There's this new one that he has out, I'm not gonna vouch for that. But the, <laughs> I'm sure it's fine, I just didn't read that. I've read you have read the new one? The new one's okay? You like it? Okay, okay. Yes. So in your sharing thing that you did. Oh, that was a question. I wasn't sure. He double clutched like twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I turned the corner and I uh, So uh, back to when you were doing the soft sell, uh -huh. there were, you came up, you got them excited, but there was no call to action. So there was no resolution on their part. I wanted to know how do, uh, well, not really, but I wanted to know, I want to watch that. And, and, can, you, and can you tell me how? So in the case of selling window screens or, mm -hmm. or whatever, whatever right. you have to have a call to action, I think. Yeah, you have to have a call to action. One, that's a good question. What you do have, or a point. You have to have a call to action. Whenever I'm working with people, I always say, and we'll talk about that, asking for the business. That's another okay, point. Okay, okay. But no, I, I don't mind getting into it. But you have, to have a, you have to have a call to action with these people. If you don't, then no one does anything. I mean, I can't help it. I don't make these rules. Okay? <laughs> So you have to have some type of call to action with these folks, otherwise you're not gonna get anything at all, all right? But yes, the point that the, the room made, which was, at, which was uh, sharing, and which was the idea of the, Because there's no call to action. 
Well, the recommendation, I, I said, I suggest you get a chance to see it if you can. That's exactly what I said. Mm -hmm. The only reason I know I say that. Yeah, because I know. Yeah. That's a call to action. I didn't say you have to. I didn't say you get your computer with it. I could say that. You don't want to, right? Who cares? You, but you want to be able to have it where you have something where people are understanding what it is that's going on. Hang on just for one second. Hang on for one second. Let me just finish up the point, and then we'll go right into Q&A. I'm totally fine with this, okay? That's not a point. I was just wondering how yeah. many people wrote down your movie name. Oh, Primer? How many people wrote down the movie name? I have no idea. I'm how pretty sure. <laughs> and I wrote down two of them. It is a good movie. All right, so let me tell you, let me tell you some questions that I like. Let me tell you some questions that, that I like to use, because I remember I said it was question-based, and then I promise we'll open up for Q&A, and you will be the first one, okay? No, no problem. All right, um, so questions that I like to be able to um, ask during a consultative sales. Uh, tell me a little bit more about what brought you here in the first place. So this is assuming you're sitting down with these people, right? Tell me a little bit more about what brought you here in the first place. What you're getting at there is what's their pain. Okay, so tell me a little bit more about what brought you here in the first place. Um, this is another one of my, that's actually one of my favorite questions. The other question I like to ask is, what are some steps that you've taken to address this problem? So if they say, oh, well, you know, my website is terrible. I mean, you know, I don't know. This is a problem. You say, oh, okay, what made you decide to, what have you done? I like that because it assumes, it assumes the intelligence. In a world where we have a, like a fourth grade reading level, that's true. In a world where we have a fourth grade reading level, I like to assume the intelligence. What have you done to address this? And depending on how you feel about the person you said, and if the answer is not a lot so far, that's totally fine. See how we said so far. All right, that's question two. And then question three, and you can do all of these, um, is in a perfect world, what would you like to see happen? In a perfect world, I use that phrase a lot. In a perfect world, we're not saying that you're gonna buy or not buy or do or not, I didn't say anything. All I said, was in a perfect world, what would, it, what would you like to be able to say? Okay? And the terminology that I talk about is meeting people where they're at. You have to meet these people where they're at. That implies a degree of intelligence. If you want to get business as a consultant, as a, you know, and, and you're coming from this marketing place and doing some, if you want to do that, you need to meet people where they're at. You need to under, the traditional sales approach, you know what the traditional sales approach does? Let me tell you what the traditional sales approach looks like. The traditional sales approach, is everybody cool with this? Okay. So the traditional sales approach goes, okay, the traditional sales approach says, I'm here, and you are here we're across this great divide, okay? And what happens is, I'm here and you're here. And what we do is we try to say everything we can do as a service provider to get you to come across. I'm the best person that you've ever met. I'm the number one agent in town. We do all of this great stuff. You need to try this, you get a free computer. We do all of these things. The whole objective of the traditional sales approach is to get this person to go that way. It's something we boil it down and we can talk about this afterwards if you want. But I'm telling you, that's what the deal is. Okay? Versus the consultative sales approach, okay? The consultative sales approach says, I'm here, you're here. And it says, okay, so first off, tell me a little bit about your situation and what got you here in the first place. Took a step closer. You say, well, gosh, we've been trying to hire other developers, and it's just been terrible. Really? What is it that you did or did not like about that? Well, it was terrible. <laughs> 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 I 
Listen, I don't know if this is going to work for you, but would you be open to maybe hearing some ideas I've used with other companies similar to your own? Yes. Well, some of the things that we provide as a consultant is this, this, and this. Really? And you bring them back to you. Does that make sense? That's a consultative sales approach. All right, we'll open up for some questions. Stephanie, can you make sure we're going to have everybody's, I have her first and then I'll get you. Um, we want to make sure, I'm going to grab this if I can. If you have put your, we're going to do a wrap up a little bit. If you put your business card in here or a piece of paper, which looks like a lot of people have. By the way, Stephanie's one of our volunteers. Yeah. Um, so if you put your business card in here or anything like that, we're going to be doing a raffle for this and we also have the newsletter that goes out, just FYI, so make sure you put your name and your email in there. Um, so I'm going to start over here. If you've already done it, great, just keep passing it around and then we'll, we'll go from there. Okay, you were first and then ma'am in the, I don't know what color that is, red, a second. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, so I just got a really clearly fourth question. Okay. When you... Uh, I think the key thing when you were talking about, um, let me tell you about the film, and, yes. and people are listening to you, is yes. that you were not reaching into their pocket, at least not yet. You were not saying, <laughs> yeah. you know what, for 10 bucks I will give you this movie tip. Mm -hmm. Or you weren't saying, um, um, hire me. You, mm -hmm. you were just sharing or offering, mm -hmm. or there was a, a certain, I guess, of bringing people close to you because you're saying something useful and friendly. Mm -hmm. You know what the word is that you're kind of searching for? The that? word is authenticity. Okay. What, what you were sensing was a degree of authenticity <laughs> that allowed me to be able to connect with you and that you felt that I was trying to help you, which actually is true. My question, though, and this is rhetorical, is why wouldn't that be the same thing with our business? Right? Well, if we want to help people, which I'm assuming you do, then why can't we have a degree of that same level of authenticity? Part of it is because we come from scarcity, which is a whole other conversation. Part of it is we come from a place of this is all we've been exposed to. We just think that this is how we're supposed to do it. <laughs> but a lot of us who do our work, mm -hmm. we're good at it, mm -hmm. we love our work, mm -hmm. we are not trained in sales and business and seeking clients, and that, that's uneasy territory. Part of it is your comfort zone, not you personally, you figuratively, okay? One of the points I make, and we can talk more about this, one of the points that I make is, as a business owner, you are your business, just FYI. And if you want one to grow, your business, the growth of your business always precedes the growth of yourself. I'll say that again. The growth of your business always precedes the growth of yourself. You need to be able to, your business does not grow until you do. And part of it is that, you know, people, I've been doing this now for 15 years, 2001. And I'm not the same person that I was when I started. People think, oh, you've written these books, and, you know, that one became a bestseller, and people are like, oh, you know, what? You know, I tell people, I do these presentations all across the country. I have had on four separate occasions less than $20 in my checking account. I don't know if anybody's had that before. Okay, I'm not asking for a show of hands, but I'm telling you it's not pleasant. Four separate occasions, $20 or less. No, no money from your parents, no money from anybody. You know what the only thing that kept me going? My wife says she didn't get upset about it. She's originally from Jamaica, you know? She's from New York, but originally from Jamaica. And, you know, where she's from, like, oh, we got two chickens, and we're just gonna, you know, we're fine. What's your problem? I was like, okay. <laughs> and I'm like, make sure she heard me, right? It's twenty dollars. She's like, nah, just give me the money, we'll be fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so my point, not to. You have to get out of your comfort zone, not you personally, the, the figurative view, it's about getting out of the comfort zone, and it's about growing yourself and your business. Okay, we can talk about that more. I promised her next, and then I'll go to you. Yes, ma'am. I would love the answer to this question. Okay. To the question of, in a perfect world, what would you like to see happen? I've had so many calls like this, and I have another one on Monday. The person's going to say, I would love you to come, moderate, the whatever, work. That's mm -hmm. my perfect world. Okay. What do you think? So you're a speaker? Yes. Okay. Um, 
Now, I'm speaking for free here. Well, and okay. this is inevitable because sometimes mm -hmm. you offer that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But it's how do you move past that? Depends on what you're trying to do, okay? For me, is it, so did everybody hear the question, how do you, if you're offered to speak for free, what's the deal? Yeah. Okay, it, it, it depends what you're trying to do. See, as a coach, my deal is I'm, getting, I'm, I'm all about clients, okay? So I'll come down, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll drive over to wherever if I think I'm gonna get business out of it. Now, part of it, I, one of the conversations I have, I have a website that is called WordPress. It's called Monetize My Rep, okay, dot com. Monetize, if you want to, that's fine, but it is for speakers, coaches, who are looking to monetize their reputation as an expert. And one of the conversations I have is monetizing a free speaking agent. All right. Now, a few things that you want to do with that. Number one, you want to let people know that you're going to have some, some resources for sale. Okay, and we'll, and we'll get to that in a second. Number two is you need to be able to have a call to action about what people can do if they want to work with you. Okay, and then from there, I gotta tell you, and we can talk more about it in detail if you want, that's fine. I'm not gonna charge you to even talk about it. But from there, if done right and you, your services are packaged properly, that should do it. It should do it. Um, if you're telling me it hasn't, or if you're telling me that maybe it hasn't as consistently, then I'm telling you there's something that perhaps you might be missing, and we can talk about it. Just tell me what you're doing, we'll do it offline, and I'm sure we'll figure it out, okay? But yeah, the, the free speaking engagement, I don't have a problem with that. If, if, man, it's like, I would do that every day if you like Okay, good question. Last one, and then we're gonna do the wrap up. Yes, yeah, ma'am. I just wanted to, um add on to your consultant cell. I was taught that awesome. years ago as a, as a radio station right? Yeah. And what people need to realize is that people love talking about themselves more than anything. So Roger if you that. go in there with the consultant cell and ask them to tell you what their problems are, right. you're offering a solution to right. that problem. So right. why are you uncomfortable if you're able to help somebody with a solution? Well, and they're going to tell you what their problem is if you just listen. Right. Right, right, and part of it is why they're uncomfortable. P part of it is because it's out of their comfort zone, and that's fine. We don't necessarily need to figure out the why they're uncomfortable. We just need to figure out the what they can do to transform that uncomfortableness into not being a barrier to, you know, growing their business. And what I tell people is, a lot of times it's being able to feel comfortable in terms, most people don't have a problem recommending a movie. Like, I haven't met somebody yet who I asked that, and they're like, no. <laughs> so I use that as a starting point, okay? And then I make what I think is a logically based question, which is, then what exactly is the difference between recommending a movie and a service that you believe in, right? And then you start uncovering some different things. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. Last question. Okay. Uh, concerned with the speaker said. Yes. That, yeah, if she says so. So she's saying is, if the thing is asking for a free speaking presentation, and then you're trying to get to a paid deal, that 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 depends on who you're talking to. Okay, there's people who just don't have the money. So I could said to the WordPress Atlanta people, Word, right, WordCamp Atlanta. I could call Kathy, maybe now. I don't have her number, but maybe. Okay, somebody has it, and I could say, hey, listen, I'm not coming back until you give me two grand. <laughs> That's the number. Right? I'm not coming back until you give me two grand. What does Kathy say? I won't do it. Can't do it. Is it because she doesn't like Brian Hilliard? Probably not. She doesn't really know me. I mean, I don't think she's gotten to the point where she doesn't like me, right? Okay. So the, the, you can't get blood from stone. So 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 saying I want to be paid. If I did that, to, I mean, I'll give you the phone and you can do it. You can see how that works out. But I'm not calling her to tell her that. You know, instead, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the situation and I'm seeing people that I can impact. I'm seeing people who I can help. I'm seeing people who, you know, uh, maybe want to be a part of some of the stuff that I do. That's what I'm seeing. And, and what you're seeing, hopefully, is learning some good stuff. And if you want to get in the program and work with me, great. If you don't, fine. You know what I mean? Don't say, I want to be not for the people, if you can't get blood from the stone. If you're talking to a company, yes. If you're talking to a nonprofit organization like WordCamp, no. If you're talking to a nonprofit organization like trade associations, no. If you're talking to like a franchise convention, yes. You have to know who has the money. You have to know your audience. Yeah, you can't get blood from the stone. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving because we're gonna get bogged down if I don't watch out. But we can definitely answer some more questions. I'll be around here, okay? We got these.
You know, my mom is a motivational speaker. I didn't tell you guys that. And she actually came up with the 12 by 12 by 12 rule. She, was a, she talks a lot about positive parenting and things like that. And uh, you, know, I tell, you know what the best part is of having a mom who's a motivational speaker? <laughs> it's very motivating and uplifting. <laughs> and you feel like you can sing, like, you know, the sound of music every other week. The other best thing is that you get to use her stuff and you don't have to pay any royalties. <laughs> okay? So, that's what we did. And it turns out she likes that, okay? Um, so we're gonna raffle off, we've got a little gift certificate here. I'm gonna raffle off something. You wanna pull out the name? Don't pull out your own. Did you put your own in here? Okay, just don't pull it out. <laughs> Okay, awesome. All right. It says Canada on here, which is good. I used to live in Canada. Where's Canada? There you go. Oh, that's a good question. Let's give a round of applause. Awesome. There you go. That's a gift certificate for you. I used to live in Canada, actually. I lived in um, Edmonton. Okay, where I would think that would be like the ocean, but you're telling me no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, let me also, we have got another little raffle here. Um, this is going to be, one of the programs I told you about was, I talked about how I do, how to market your business in less than 90 days, which is a coaching program that we do. Um, I'm gonna raffle off a little 30 minute consult with yours truly, all right? We can talk a little bit about your business, talk about some questions and stuff that you might have, um, and that is no problem. So Stephanie, we're gonna do another one. Awesome, another card. Huh, this is interesting. Ben Cote, the, where's Ben? <coughs> ah, he, on his card, it, what does it say, Ben? The internet genius. The internet genius. That is somebody who gets, who deserves this. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> All right, Ben, you can call me, you can give us a call. We will set something up, and that is not a problem. Okay? Awesome, awesome. Now, sometimes people ask me if they want, they say, boy, you know what? I wanted to kind of get on that list, Brian, um, and I wanted to kind of chat with you, but I didn't win. Um, we try to be an all-inclusive community here. So what I've done, these are free deals, okay? It's a 15-minute laser coaching session uh, with yours truly. We put some slots down here, name, phone number, email. Um, it's a free deal, 15 minutes. If you want to talk a little bit about yourself, your business, and what it is that you'd like, a thousand different questions, you're saying just put it over here, so fine. Um, then that is, <laughs> that is fine. Make sure I get my pen back. I'm going to be watching. <laughs> and just circulate that around. And if you, if you can't fill a slot or a time, just write your name and your number on the back or something, and either myself or Trish will get back to you, okay? All right, we are on the move, and we have got number one, which is, this is something that I know you've seen all the time, okay? And very simply, okay, mistake number one is not, Asking for what? Not asking for the business. What is wrong with people who get to the proverbial three yard line, football term, and they let it go? Okay? And what happens is, you know, part of the problem, yeah, <laughs> part of the problem is that when you ask, when people are afraid, and that's the word, afraid. It's a fear-based, it's a fear-based behavior. It's just like avoidance behavior, procrastination. Okay? When people don't ask for the business, let me tell you what happens. They don't get the business. <laughs> Very simple. You don't ask for the business and you don't get the business. Now, one of the things that I tell people, I mentioned something before, and, and I'll, I'll tell you this uh, again kind of in a different way. <coughs> Sales and asking for the business 
is less about getting the sale and more about creating a buying environment. Let me say that again. Asking for the business is less about getting a sale. Oh, I'm going to get this sale, I'm going to hunt it you know, down. It's about creating a buying environment. Jeffrey Gittimer talks about this a lot. Okay? A buying environment is a place where people are open to taking that next logical step with you. A buying environment is where you say, hey, listen, I'd love to be able to work with you, and I think I can help you out in these three ways. See that? You tried to take the pen. I told you that. It's being able to say, hey, listen, I think I, can work, I think I can work with you, and here's how I can help in these three ways. I'd love to be able to work with you. Okay? You want to create an environment, you guys mentioned before, an authority. Okay? You want to be able to have credibility. And then, gosh darn it, you want to be able to ask for the sale. Part of the challenge, okay, part of the challenge is that a lot of people are so focused on how it feels to not get the sale, looking back. And I get that. Like, you think I like losing? I don't. I mean, that's a little, you know, I don't like losing. In any Okay, I lost a game of chess last night, I'm still a little upset about it. Well, yeah. How are you married? Huh? <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I didn't hear what you said. Okay. How am I married? How am I married? Because I'm a good looking guy. What are you talking about? <laughs> what question is that? <laughs> anyway, I don't like losing. All right? On any of this stuff. And what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to create an opportunity where people are able to see, hey, listen. This is a next step. Part of it is a lot of times people don't know what the next step is. This sounds great. Uh, you know, I, I've got this. Uh, right? What do I do? Well, here's what we do. You put a you know, $100 deposit down, get this. We'll be able to put the installments down on this. We'll do this. And here's what I always tell people, OK? Whatever I'm doing, kind of my deal, this, I wrote an article on this a while back. When you talk about price, and that's a whole separate discussion. I know Ben talked about that earlier today. Okay, so I'm not going to, whatever. But what you want to be able to do is when you get into delivering and asking for the business, I think of it as going up and back down the hill again. This is how I think, okay? Up the hill is where you're talking about the benefits, you're talking about whether or not you can connect. Up the hill is creating a value. Is everybody with me on that? Top of the hill is when you talk about what that compensation is going to be. Before you say anything else, you then go back down the hill reiterating the value or the deliverables that they're going to get. Okay? So let me give you an example. What I'll say to people is, you know, uh, if you want to be able to come in our program on marketing your business in less than 90 days, we're going to have three sessions. It's going to be an hour piece. It's going to be blah, blah, blah. And we're going to be able to get you all this good stuff, and that's going to be for X dollars. Now, for X dollars, what you're going to get is these sessions, the ability to be able to do this, and to be able to do that up and right back down again. I do not ask what they think. That's a killer question. Well, what do you think? Oh! <laughs> it's like a physical pain when I hear people say that. Okay, I don't ask people what they think, because that's a left brain. People buy with their right foot side. Okay, so you say, well, how does this look to you? How does it feel like? Do you see this being something you could use? Am I making sense with this? Okay, those are all up the hill, back down again, have the price, be able to move, and be able to do those types of things. So when you ask for the sale, you need to absolutely make sure that people are able to get what it is that you're doing and be able to move forward. All right, I'm gonna stick around afterwards. I told you a little bit before, just so that I'm not a hypocrite, we do have a copy of our book and a CD, um, it's 20 bucks. And if you want to be able to do that, you can swing by over here. We even have a coaching certificate if you want a larger package as well. Yes? Just one question. Okay. Um, I'm kind of trying to figure out how do we talk about the uh, conversation? Yeah, kind of say success. Yes. We talk about uh, that Uh huh. But one of the things um, I might be hearing is the cold call. Maybe you We're going to have to talk about that offline. Because cold, because that's a, I don't have 10, that's 10, that's not a 10 second answer. Okay. But you be the first one there, we'll talk. Okay? Everybody, that is awesome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.